All right, so I'll go ahead and turn it on. The LED changes colors, which is really cool. And open up the disc tray. Look at that. What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech. And what I have here is something very nostalgic for me. This is the Sega Dreamcast. And what makes this nostalgic for me is because when I first moved down to Tampa, Florida, I moved down alone with $100 in my pocket and I had no friends with me, I had no roommates, and this got me through a lot of lonely days. Now I gave my old Dreamcast away years ago, but I found this one broken for around $25. It has a known disc reading issue and no power. So I don't understand how he has a disc issue if there's no power. Maybe the disc issue came first, and then later on it had no power. But if I could get it repaired, the Dreamcast would be worth $150. However, if I get it repaired and mod it, the value goes up between three to $600, which is incredible. This was one of the first ever online gaming consoles. You can see right here, it has a phone line. This was a 56K modem. Yes, you could connect <laughs> to online gameplay and connect to the internet and update your games with a phone line. 56k modem <laughs> you can imagine how long that took but what makes this really cool it's modular so you can upgrade it but this one looks fairly clean as you can see and it looks like it has all of its parts but the listing person said it has no power and does not read discs which of course it does not read a disc because there's no power but if you want to know if yours can be modded too what you want to look is see right here and it says NTSC with the letter U. Well, that means United States. This is a United States version right here. If it has a one or a zero, that's version zero or one. If it has a two, that cannot be modded as of today. So if you do have version zero, you cannot use the SD card reader kit mod. You have to use the USB mod. On eBay, you could buy the mod kit for version 1 and version 0. It comes with the motherboard and the hard drive preloaded with games. So this is it right here. I got it on Amazon. And I'll leave a link in the video description below. Basically, it consists of a board that is swapped out for the optical drive. So this optical drive is going out the window. Well, I'll probably put it somewhere and I'm swapping it out for this modded board that reads SD cards. Now what you also need is a 32 gig micro SD card or SD card. Put that SD card in your PC and format it to a FAT32. Then you can add all those folders with the games on it. Now this is the cover for the SD card reader. You don't really need this. This is only for visual purposes only. I also bought the control board repair kit. So if your controller ports don't work, then this should fix your issue. It also comes with a battery holder and I got also a battery. This is a rechargeable lithium battery and make sure you don't use a regular lithium battery. And I bought a crap ton of capacitors. As you guys know, I replace a lot of capacitors in my videos because some of the things I deal with are really old. I highly suggest getting a capacitor kit like this because capacitors only last 10 to 15 years and then they start to leak and go bad. I also bought a fan. If you wanna hook it up to your HDTV, I have this up converter. So this actually plugs directly into the Dreamcast and you plug in your HDMI cable right here. And I got some controllers. I don't know if they're working, but we'll find out. I know this does not work. The batteries are probably dead. And I have this thing. I don't know what, this is a rumble pack, I guess. But yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? Because this was an external rumble pack. Sega was very innovative. And look, your controller has the LCD screen. That's very cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the network adapter. And there's four screws on each corner. And then once you remove the four screws, you want to flip it around and remove the top. Next, go ahead and wiggle the cover off and we're going to plug it in and see what's wrong with the power. Now, don't touch anything metal. You can't get shocked, 
Now once you plug it in, press the power on switch and see if the fan turns on and the LED stays on. The LED did flash and the fan turned on and off. That lets me know that the GD ROM drive is causing the circuit to shut down. It's actually kind of common. So we remove the three screws on each corner and unplug the whole metal chassis with the CD, well, GD ROM drive, it's called. It just unplugs. We're gonna upgrade it to the SD card reader. But now, as you notice, when we plug it back in, the LED stays on and the fan stays on. And that lets me know that the GD ROM drive was causing the circuit to shut down when it was plugged in. Another thing that causes the power to go on and off is these power pins that were connected to the power supply. Clean them with the electronic cleaner and that should fix that issue. And since this is a 20 year old unit, I highly recommend cleaning all the connections, all the ribbon cable connections, and even the ports. Now here I'm replacing all the capacitors with the same value capacitors. You wanna make sure when you put in the capacitors, they go in the right way. There's a stripe on the capacitor and there's a white dot. Make sure the gray stripe matches the white dot on the board. And this takes about like 30 minutes to do. I highly recommend getting the capacitor kit on eBay instead of getting a big capacitor kit with wide variety of capacitors because you may not have the 300 volt capacitor in that kit, which this one needs. After you're done replacing all the capacitors, trim the legs and plug the board back in. Now with the controller port board, I'm gonna replace the old battery, which is bad, with a battery holder and then plug in the new rechargeable lithium battery. Now in the future, if that battery goes bad, I could simply unplug it and plug in a new battery without desoldering anything, which makes things a whole lot more convenient. I'm also upgrading the fuse to a resettable fuse so if you plug in a bad controller into the port and pop the fuse, then you don't have to replace that fuse. Now go ahead and plug in the rechargeable lithium battery, plug the board in and screw it into place. Now make sure you clean all the ribbon cable connections. Right here is the SD card reader. You wanna plug in the stands and it simply just plugs into the motherboard on the bottom. Now if you decide to get the SD card reader cover, it does come with the extension cable that plugs into the SD card reader that's plugged into the motherboard. This makes everything look really sleek. Now here I drilled through the SD card cover and pushed in a red LED. That is soldered to the 12 volt line on the power supply. I decided to put a 12 volt red LED to simulate a laser optic eye. Now to prepare the SD card, I watched Rostelger's video, it's very informative. I'll leave a link in the video description below. With the VMU memory card, you simply replace the batteries, really easy to do, and set the time. Now I highly recommend using electronic cleaner, clean out the ports, AV port and the power port. And if you want to, you can upgrade the fan if it's acting up or making a lot of noise. Uh, I cleaned it out with electronic cleaner and it wasn't making a really a lot of noise, but I decided to future-proof my Dreamcast and upgrade the fan. When you upgrade the fan, you have to get the 3D printed fan mount and the switch mechanism. Now everything total cost me around $200. $30 for the broken Dreamcast. The controller port repair kit was about $10. The battery, lithium rechargeable battery was $7. The capacitor repair kit for the power supply was $9. The fan was $14. The 3D printed fan mount and the switch mechanism was $10. The HDMI up converter for my HDTV was $30. And the modded SD card reader board was $90. And the SD card itself was around 12 bucks. Now, if you have the version zero, you're not gonna get the modded SD card reader board or the SD card. You're gonna end up getting the hard drive with the motherboard and that would be like $160 versus $100. So it's, I really highly recommend getting version one because it's $60 cheaper if you're gonna mod it. So these are all the parts I replaced. That's the fuse on the controller board, 
These are the batteries that go in the memory card. And this is the fuse on the controller board, the LED on the controller board. And there was a small capacitor on the controller board. And the rest are power supply capacitors. But these are all the parts you have to replace. Alright, let's go ahead and try out the modded, repaired Sega Dreamcast again. This time I have an upgraded SD card. And I'm just going to put it in here. This is a 128 gig SD card. And right here is the reset button. And once again, that red LED simulates the laser optic eye that would normally be in a regular GD ROM drive. And so let's go ahead and turn it on. Of course, you can have the tray open or tray closed. I'm just going to close it. And with the Sega Dreamcast, Try to get the bundle broken and make sure it comes with the memory card. And I highly recommend the Rumble Pack. And I highly recommend the Fishing Rod. And it has a Rumble Pack already built in. It's one of the most innovative game systems for its time. All right. So now I can unplug this. All right, and they do make a wireless controller. It's expensive, but they do make it. Um, but I just use the wired one because I'm sitting six feet away from my TV. All right, so now we got this plugged in. Something, I don't know, let's pick anyone. All right, so you just basically reel in and you move your controller around trying to simulate a real fish. Because these fish, are kind of smart. Oh, you got them. You have to go up if you want to hook them. And you want to balance. This is hard. This guy is huge. I'm going to probably lose him. Ah, 246 pounds. So that guy was huge. That's why I lost him. I'm learning how to play this game. All right, let's try a different one. All right. So let's try again. Here's, here comes a fish. Got him. Holy crap. This guy's a fighter. So you gotta keep it balanced. Ah, oh, I messed up. Alright, this is arcade mode, so this time's up, but you can just hit A. In the arcade, you would have to put a quarter in to get it continued. Keep it balanced right in the middle. This is lower the rod. This is left. Right. Right. This guy is tough. And the rumble pack is really showing off like it's fighting. It feels like you're fighting the fish because the rumble pack is really going crazy right now. The only thing I wish it had is uh, force feedback on the reel. Man, it's taking a long time to reel this guy in. Did I get him? Oh my god, I got him. I never got a fish like that before. Oh, this is a beast. How many? 1,400 points, 133 pounds. That's a record. I'll leave on a good note. Guys, if you found this video informative, give me a big thumbs up. If you know anyone that has a broken Sega Dreamcast, go ahead and click on the share button below and share this video to them, help someone out. If you want more tech videos like this coming your way, subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay updated on the latest tech videos.